Welcome back, and we have our expert uh, panelists here, Alexander Bachman, with the report that came in this morning. Steve Quayle, a number of other people brought out this information. It was a big panic on the blogosphere that there was a, a burning of the fuel rod assemblies in Cooling Pool 4. We've been jetting out our sources, and we have uh, Chris Harris here, our nuclear safety expert. Alexander, so far we found no evidence other than the grass fire on it that these fuel rod assemblies have been on fire. I know that someday it will. In fact, we know it's only a matter of time because we look at the nuclear engineering that the once the seals actually break down, no amount of water put in the top of cooling pool 4 will ever keep these rods cool enough to not go pyrophoric, which means you get basically a solid fuel burning pyrophoric fire. You can't even pour water on it because it just makes it burn even faster because as soon as you pour it on top of these zirconite things, they generate hydrogen, which can generate a hydrogen-based explosion, and it actually heats it up more. So... Uh, at, at some point, we've got, we're going to have a really big disaster, plus the corium that's underneath it. They're now going to, we talked about this last week, they're going to be putting in a uh, technique using uh, cosmic ray shadows, looking at the cosmic ray shadows of the corium deep underground, and using a technique uh, to look at these shadows to see where the corium is. Uh, they could use ground penetrating and radar or radar too. This should have been done over a year ago, because not knowing where the corium is, and also not looking at steam tunnels that may be going many kilometers away, either under the ocean floor or toward, you know, natural cracks in the ground that could bring it to underground tunneling systems for high-speed trains in northern Tokyo that can carry it all the way to the city of Tokyo and uh, areas many, many kilometers away. Uh, none of these things have been questions have been asked, so even though we have people that have gone to the train stations and said, look at the radiation detectors that reach through the ceiling. Well, how can that happen? Well, these things are like giant push-pull, uh, if you want to call pistons, when the trains go through these tunnels and the massive amount of air, and if there's communicating steam jets that can go 20, 30, 40 kilometers, what do you expect? The same way under the ocean floor, they're going to put literally thousands of square miles of concrete at the bottom of the ocean floor to, quote, seal it off so it won't get out. Um, tell us about this story. This, this story to me is either somebody incompetent who doesn't have proper data or it's a situation where they know a disaster is soon going to happen and they want the alternative media to look like fools by picking this story up and running with it when there's no evidence to indicate that it is happening, we're constantly being poisoned, when it does finally blow, everybody in North America and the Northern Hemisphere is going to have to go to decon procedures right away because the amount of radiation that's going to be released is going to be so horrendous, people don't realize if it's raining outside, you're going to have to leave your raincoat and galoshes in the, in a, if you want to call it the uh, broom closet outside the, the your house, you're going to have to start using HEPA filters to get the larger particles. You're going to have to start taking a totally different approach where you wear a NIOSH and N95 mask to reduce particle uh, breathing, especially when there's aerosols. Uh, people don't realize that this is a very real disaster because it's been out of sight, out of mind. Very little of the, of the national media is touching this at all. And I don't want the alternative media, because we're, we're actually better by a large margin than this stupid so-called lame brain media, we call it. The lame stream media is, is a better term. Uh, precisely, Dr. Rigo. I mean, the situation is, uh, is that these types of stories, when they get out and they become viralized because of uh, the comments made on, on the story and just the headline itself, Red Alert, oh, Fukushima, yeah, on ridiculous. Alert, and exploded and all that, everybody's pick, picking up on it. But well, it's that's why people should listen, listen to the Neutral Medical. That's why they should listen to the Neutral Medical Report. We vet people like yourself that will check out fact, fact check, and Chris Harris, a nuclear expert. We have geopolitical people, and one of the things that's very concerning is from very good sources, John is saying to me, John Moore, that our military are about to commit an act of war against Syria and Iran. Now, you have to understand the S-400 and the aircraft systems deployed by Russia, Russia and China said, yet and no, that means no means no. It means that we're on the verge of a Middle East war that could precipitate a global war. Uh, this is not a joke. This is real. This is not, you know, conjecture. I don't think it's going to happen. I think what we're doing is we're jockeying toward a new world financial order, and these are all just proxy events that are heading toward that. But if they're stupid enough to do an air attack and hit Bashir, the amount of radiation release will be hundreds of times more than Chernobyl. And uh, when we had that, we were actually about to issue potassium iodide capsules to the entire northern hemisphere back when that happened many years ago. So I don't think people really uh, comprehend that civilization, I call it, it's now, <laughs> it's now 21 months PF, I call it, you know, the AD and BC, you know, Eno Domino. This is PF or post Fukushima. 
Uh, yeah, I, I believe that our calendar should be rewritten. I mean, after this event, it's just of epic proportions. If we look into the situation and we find out, for example, why would somebody post something like this on the Internet? Uh, well, they want to catch uh, exactly us off guard in order that maybe, we Maybe republish. they just have an ego problem and they want to get attention. Uh, look, we're not here to get attention. We're here to get real facts. We provide, for example, alternatives to conventional toxic medicine to help people get well. I provide consults free. Uh, this is no joke. We deal with geopolitical and other issues. I've had Q-level security clearance and worked for the government, work with FEMA, work with uh, Special Forces and Delta. I have respect for our military and our different agencies. I see defects, though. The biggest defect is one agency doesn't talk to another. I see defects where we have uh, so-called high-level talks going along with Iran when the real issue has nothing to do whatsoever with the idea whether Iran has nuclear materials. Uh, firstly, it's dealing with oil. The whole issue is that they've discovered eight times more oil in northern Iraq than they have in Saudi Arabia. And uh, the powers that be want control of that oil. That's what this is all about. And the Sunni Shiite war that they're, they're revving up is all so they can get control of that oil completely. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. It's a, it's a war for resources. It's the entire scenario all over again. Now, they perfected the Gulf War one and two. now with this scenario. They know how to take down states. They know how to weaken states using, using proxy wars, using al-Qaeda, which is well, now, they, for they, example... They, they, uh, they weaken Syria and Iran so, so badly now. And this is an act of war we've already done. We've already done embargoes and blockades. We even had America pass laws. And this is how arrogant our government is to pass laws that can have a long arm as long as to say to the Shanghai Bank of Iraq in Shanghai, China, that you can't do financial transactions so the people can't sell their oil to get staples of cooking oil, wheat, and, and rice. Now, that's pretty damned obscene. Now, I know people are in America, rah, rah, America. No. America, if you want to be righteous, you need to act righteous. You've got to stop this BS. And, you know, whatever little dog and pony show they're going to put on tonight between Obama, who's a maniac and a communist, and Romney, who could easily become a, a, a fascist, we really got to watch it here. And you know, I, I'm going to vote, you know, holding my nose for Romney because I do not want to see Obama get in. Uh, I know there's a lot of people say, oh, you can't do that. I said, look, uh, we know that Romney stated he's pro-life. We know that, that Ryan stated he's pro-life. We know that the financial policies, we can't continue going down this road, or we'll probably have a financial collapse as early as sometime next year, uh, which means we're kind of a, maximum, a, a devaluation of the U.S. dollar to one quarter its current value, a collapse of states and cities, martial law, and uh, cleaning up people like you and me that are broadcasters or, or experts in these things. And we're, we're going to be cooling our heels in a civil detention camp. We're going to be under six feet of dirt. That's where it's going. People say, oh, no, that can't happen in America. BS, it can't happen in America. That's where we're going. And one more term of Obama, and we're done. This is not like you, in 2016, uh, the movie by Dinesh D'Souza is just a mild phase of this. So this is this little uh, exaggerated uh, story again, by, you know, put up by, by a number of people, needs to be kind of dismissed. Until we get corroboration, we're not going to put any of this crap out. And when we do... You damn well listen to us, and you take action, and don't think it. Deagle's just exaggerating because he wants to sell Neutrodine. No, we want you to be protected because if you don't have the radiation protection and the masks, and even procedures like go to your hardware store and get right now HEPA filters on your furnace so that you don't, not just regular ones, but good HEPA filters. If you're not prepared for decon and the radiation cloud comes, man, you're not going to be a happy camper. You know, you go outside and say, oh, my gosh, my radiation detector's gone off the scale. Like, what do we do now, dear? Oh, well, we listened to Deagle, so we got all the supplies. We close up the windows. We got HEPA filters in our furnace. We're going to be outside and it's raining. We're going to take off our rain clothes outside. We're going to decontaminate in the shower. We'll be okay. But if you don't, just because you can't taste it or smell it doesn't mean it's not going to kill you. And it may not do it right now. Six months, two years from now, you'll get your multi-form glioblastoma that will kill you in six months if you don't protect yourself today. So... You better take heed. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, gentlemen, let's uh, get into it. Um, um, Chris, tell us first uh, the analysis of all these situations. We've got an earthquake over the weekend to hit Diablo Canyon, which is, by the way, three converging fault lines on an Indian burial land. It's like this is not a uh, made-for-TV movie. This is reality. 
Uh, and we've got 75% of the reactors in this report that came out two months ago in America are sitting near strike zones of fault lines, like the San Jacinto upthrust zone off of uh, San Onofre, which now these morons are trying to see if they can sidestep the whole process of relicensure of the plant, which could take several years, and want to reactivate it at 70% power. I'm sitting 12 miles away from uh, San Onofre. I don't want that damn thing to be turned back on again. I know that there's a major defect in the design. Uh, all the Mark I and Mark II reactors have problems all over the world. And uh, most people don't realize that uh, earthquakes are increasing everywhere. We had giant volcanic activity in two major volcanoes in Kamchatka, which is the southern peninsula where they have some of the biggest bears on Earth and some of the most active volcanoes. Uh, we need found F Mount Fuji is filling up its magma chamber ready to blow. It's actually due right now. And uh, the Ui and uh, Chiba reactor sites in Japan are literally on the strike zone of major uh, earthquake and volcanic activity, 5.6 off the coast, uh, I think it was last week, off the coast of Sendai and, and Fukushima. All they need is a 6 or 7 level earthquake, and the cooling pool 4 is going to fall over. Uh, what the heck is going on, and why is Obama not addressing this? Nobody is talking about Fukushima on these debates, are they? No, we, we, we talked about that. There's certainly a, an apparent... Uh Quieting, quieting up. Even it's a no-touch issue. It's like, in other words, they figure, well, we can't win on this one, so let's not open up that can of worms. Well, I mean, with respect to specifically uh, atomic power, I mean, we talked about uh, the New York Times article that showed David Axelrod as uh, a consultant to the board of directors of Exelon, one of the largest EW. Right, and of course, Obama's green policy is nuclear. His green policy is we don't give a damn if it blows or releases energy. Uh, or it stores tons of stuff where you get 50 years of power and have to store the stuff for 20 million years. We don't care. It's green as far as we're concerned. Yeah, it's green because it's radioactive. No, this is nastiness, craziness, and it's not going to work. And Obama's policy, obviously, is we don't care. If it's nuclear, it's good. And, of course, that fits in with the Queen because Rio Tinto Mines, the Queen, and the Carlisle Group own 80% of the nuclear uh, mines, the uranium mines on Earth, the rail lines, which were built by the, um, uh, what's the name of the, one of the other organizations that's allied with the, with um, Dick the Cheney. They, they built the actual spur line from Central Australia to carry the second largest deposits outside of, uh, you know, Saskatchewan, Canada. I mean, people need to understand that they, they want to proliferate reactors. Their plan originally was 500 reactors in, in China in the next five years. I don't know how many they put up. I think... At the time Fukushima happened, there were 32 that were, quote, going to come online in the next year or two in China. 32 reactors. Yeah, and, and today on, uh, you, just to going back to the original concept of, uh, you know, the, the government being able to do something about it, you know, there's on Informable today, if you take a look at it, they, uh, he did a good job and found that there were at least over 100 emails. These are public uh, email messages to the NRC from the public, all expressing concern about nuclear power right after Fukushima. These were dealing with the intentionally so that they would be hidden. They're not supposed to do that. They're supposed to public record is supposed to be public record. So uh, I don't think you would expect help in that res in that respect, you know, from, from any official source or so called official source. You know, as John Moore would say, you know, you're on your own and uh, that, uh, apparently we, we have been. So uh, I would go go back to uh, really just uh, quickly about the Diablo Canyon. Uh, it's another earthquake and, and today I sent you another report that came out and talked about a little bit about uh, the official stance, and that was that there was a, a fault, I call it a stealth fault line, where the plant didn't know it was there uh, during construction. It was discovered in 2008, and uh, it turns out that it, it has some activity. Now, they analyzed it, and lo and behold, they, they found that no earthquake from that fault could possibly exceed the design limits of this plant. I don't know how you know that, but... Uh, you know, so so right away everything is everything is just fine. You know, that's that's pretty much where, where I'm, I'm coming from. On yeah. Uh, now, uh, Alexander, tell us what you're hearing because yeah. we have uh, a number of bases being set up by. Remember, now, there's there's a triad of nations that are now allying for major serious attacks on America on a domestic level. We've got China, we've got the Zeta Cartel, and we have Al Qaeda. Tell us about that and what's going on in Mexico and why we need to really be concerned because any kind of military action against Syria and Iran is going to precipitate a major, not only increase in terrorism, but a very real possibility of a, quote, trans-border invasion of terrorists, 
uh, into America from Mexico? Well, the situation is getting dire because uh, we now have confirmation that the Zeta cartel is actively working with al-Qaeda. Now, right. we know al-Qaeda is being uh, pushed and financed by the CIA. We right. have they're a their, confirmation. They're their bad dog. It's almost like they're the rabid dog of the CIA, uh, and they're on a chain, uh, you know, a relatively long one. And then when they have Hillary Clinton come up and make statements that, oh, well, we apologize because most of our weapons went to the bad guys, the wrong guys. It didn't go to the real Syrian Free Army that are Syrians. It went to these other terrorists. They're actually yeah. graduates of Camp X-Ray and killing people in Tunisia and Libya that are maniacs uh, that we just armed, gave them intelligence and satellite radio so they can go and kill people in Syria, including Christians, the military and police, and uh, trying to do a regime change, which, of course, Saudi Arabians are paying up to 100 well, plus. it turns out that the IDF forces have been training a special tactical operations group that is in Coahuila and Piedras Negras, and yesterday had a gunfight with the Zetas, and they, they managed to confiscate a bunch of Russian uh, weapons and uh, RPGs and rocket launchers that are of Russian uh, manufacturing. Everybody in Mexico right now, the chatter is that these arms are being run in through Venezuela by Chavez into Mexico in order order to finance the Zeta. So I don't know who, who else is financing this drug war in Mexico, but everybody wants a, a piece of the pie, the way I see it. Now, now yeah, a curious well, story that many people don't know real quickly yeah, is that yeah. Al-Qaeda Al started uh, appearing in Mexico in the desert of Sonora, uh, north of San Carlos, the port of San Carlos in the Gulf of California. Now, when they start operating, we have this uh, confirmed. Uh, national security in, Mex in Mexico called Bush, Vicente Fox called Bush uh, Jr., and Bush Jr. said, no, don't even touch them. They are our guys. That's what Bush told Vicente Fox. So you we have repeat that. Roll back, roll back, re replay, replay. He told them that the Zeta cartel are their guys? No, no. He told them that the Al-Qaeda bases in Sonora, in the desert of Sonora, south of uh, Arizona. The Al-Qaeda bases, yeah. But remember now, Al-Qaeda now are working with Zetas. So remember that what's really going on in the so-called drug war, and this is after the fusion centers set up in America, and now the, the binational uh, intelligence centers set up between the American government and the Mexican government, which are in uh, Mexico City uh, and across the border in Texas and Arizona, that these special centers are actually collaborating to say, well, these groups of cartels are our cartels. These guys are not our sanctioned cartels for bringing in illegal drugs. People well, need to grasp that. Yeah, We have confirmation right? that El Chapo Guzman is having, has an active agreement with the U.S. federal government to bring all the drugs he wants into Chicago and then redistribute nationwide. That's the truth. So they want him to monopolize the drug trade in all Mexico and get the Zetas out of the way before Enrique Peña Nieto enters into power on the 1st of December. That's what we have. And then we have this huge fiasco that's uh, a scandal in itself. Syria, in Syria, there's an active uh, uh, weapons trade corridor, illegal, by the way, being financed by the United States government. Again, Obama's financing the war in Syria. He's financing the drug war here in Mexico. Exactly. Iodine protection. Amazing, isn't it? They're Welcome back. And let's let's talk about what we really should be talked about tonight. Not only should these uh, two uh, dancing clowns talk about the real issue of are either one of you going to back Israel or do it on your own to back an attack on Iran and Syria, which will not only precipitate a regional war but a worldwide energy collapse from the Strait of Hormuz, and possibly precipitate a thermonuclear conflict with Russia and China. Number two, are you going to deal with the issue of Mexico, where America has alliances with um, Guzman? And the Al Qaeda people, which are supplying these weapons, I like, want you to. You mentioned on the break, Alexander, back it up and tell us again what you've discovered. And in fact, this issue isn't dealt with. We have alliances with Guzman and Al Qaeda, which are his own bodyguards. The this is a hard to believe. I mean, if you wrote this as a script, somebody in Hollywood would say, "Whatever drugs you were on when you wrote this script, I want double." I'm not I mean, kidding you. The, remember the Stratford emails? You know, the Stratford server was uh, hacked out of uh, Austin. 
And uh, we know that Stratford Intelligence Services, which is a, a front for whatever agency you want, uh, they were hacked about a year ago. This was a great big scandal. Now, Wiki, Wiki, WikiLeaks put out the emails from Stratford on their website. And these leaked emails clearly show and demonstrate that a Mexican foreign uh, diplomat working in Arizona leaked emails to Stratford confirming that the U.S. government works with the Mexican cartels to traffic drugs into the United States and has sided with the Sinaloa cartel to limit or cur curve the violence in Mexico. And part of the agreement was Operation Fast and Furious was part of an agreement to finance and arm the Sinaloa cartel so they could fight, and fight against the Zeta cartel. Yeah, in other words, the Sinaloa cartel, this is the whole scheme, was going to bring the drugs in, distribute them through American distributors, and again, remember, it's legal, believe it or not, this is a big word, legal for illegal drug money to be laundered in American banks. And people need to understand that. They, they scratch their head and say, well, if some kid uses a drug illegally, they go to prison. Or if they're selling it on the street, but the drug cartels and the big banks can certainly be working with the U.S. government, in fact, even bidding arms. That's why Minister Eric Holder, which is a criminal, uh, and Fast and Furious, all these things are all tied together. You mentioned something about them closing a bridge and bringing these armaments across. Can you back up and tell us about that? Sure. On the 26th of September, uh, there was a very big shootout in uh, Piedras Negras, Coahuila. This is on, exactly on the border with Eagle Pass, Texas. And they, they, there was a mock bomb placed on the bridge on the American side, on the number two bridge, which forced Eagle Pass County to be evacuated. They closed down the border. And what this was just a smoke, a smoke screen, according to our sources, that are directly embedded inside Piedras Negras, that, in fact... Uh, convoys of military, I mean, very high-grade military uh, weapons were being funneled into uh, Coahuila at the time of this happening. So it was a smoke screen in order to get m uh, a massive amount of weapons inside for the Sinaloa cartel in order to fight off the Zetas. Yeah. So, so what I mean, we know is they want to do this a before the war is about to you know, explode yeah. in the northern territory of Mexico but of massive proportions. And that's why the military is in a heightened state of alert right now. Now we have uh, Israel, uh, Israel-trained uh, uh, black ops working, operating in Coahuila, like executing uh, in public streets, you know, members of the cartel, of the Zeta cartel. And they don't care if there are casualties of war here, or civilian casualties. They are trained to shoot at whatever moves during daylight. That's how bad it is in Piedras Negras. Right. Now, 32,000 dead is more than Afghanistan and Iraq in the last four years. And yet people don't, and we don't have anybody, I'll guarantee tonight, there won't be two seconds spent on Mexico. There won't be two seconds spent on the fact there's ten Chinese bases in northern Mexico. There won't be one second spent on the fact that through for decades now, for more than a decade and a half, there's been Chinese-made weapons coming in in containers through Long Beach, California, to gangs in America with full knowledge of the CIA and the U.S. government. There won't be one second spent on whether or not either one of these fools is planning on a preemptive use of nuclear weapons and refueling tankers to bomb the Bashir live nuclear reactor that'll cause a massive radiation release. There'll be not any discussion about the fact that last summer, that earlier this summer, they had a Russian boomer nuclear submarine loaded with to the bristling nuclear weapons sitting in the center of the Gulf of Mexico. There won't be any discussion about a few months ago a Chinese diesel submarine with nuclear weapons was found off the coast of California, not only near Point Magoo, but also further north. Uh, off of San Francisco. There'll be no discussion about foreign policy in terms of uh, the QE3, which is the issue of a currency war going on with China. Uh, China has devalued their currency in a sense uh, twice, and their interest rates twice in the last month, and their economy is crashing. People and nobody's say, oh, talking about the fact that, that Mexico is in bed with the Chinese, and we have 12 military Chinese bases on in Mexico right now. Right, and they're not going to tell you that because the Chinese, and they're very schizophrenic over there. Uh, I remember talking to my uh, sister who actually uh, speaks three different dialects of Chinese, and she, uh, her husband is Chinese. Uh, their family were originally from Shenzhen, China. She said that in the, in the Red Book by Mao, Mao Zedong that they tell Chinese soldiers when they're being trained that your wife is in America. They're saying basically, they say by 2035 there'll be an excess of 60 or to 75 million 
uh, Chinese males, it's already over the top. They don't have numbers because they can't tell you how many they've got a, a an imbalance of males to females because 93% of the abortions on earth by both Indians like Hindus and by the Chinese and these other third world countries, 93% of the abortions on earth are not birth defected or have Down syndrome, they're female. Most of the abortions on earth are female. So when I hear all these women saying they want to have their right for abortion, no, you won't have the right to reproduce. It'll be transferred to the state and laboratories. So don't think you're going to get your rights. What you haven't thought of is your wrongs. When you have these rights, guess what? Eventually, they'll eliminate the need for females altogether if they can get away with it. The state does not want, they want to have a unisex drone class for the underclass. They do not want to have people that can reproduce spontaneously. They want to have total control of the population. And people think, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. No, I'm telling you where it's going. And there really is not a lot of wiggle room in this either. It's and just, uh, I, yeah. it's exactly they say it in their own documents what they want to do. They want total population control. Well, it's not only that. I mean, the best way to go uh, to not get approval from Congress or, you know, uh, com uh, uh, or vetting or whatever you want to call it, or uh, uh, an official investigation into taxes and money that the black ops programs need in order to finance the deep underground military recesses that they have in order to uh, escape the things that are going to come and hit this earth, is basically they use the drug industry to finance all the underground military installations in order to get that money there, funnel it exactly. through the cartel so nobody has to be tracked. $2, billion, or, you know, $2, trillion, dollars, $2 trillion dollars a year for decades and decades, going back to the 40s. Uh, with the with MI5 and MI6, the British ran the drug trade. After the Second World War, the Americans and CIA got heavily involved. Yeah, that's why they're in Afghanistan. The, the poppy fields in Afghanistan weren't the primary producers of this before the destruction of the irrigation projects that the Army Corps engineers built in the 1950s. That was the Golden Triangle in Burma, you know, Myanmar. That was moved to Afghanistan after they destroyed the ability for them to have you know, raise regular crops and they had to go to dry land farming and the the warlords and the governing parties and the Russians who get drug trade as well and the Americans and British, they want the drug trade because of those drugs coming to America so those trillions of dollars go off to black op projects and there's nothing on the books. Why do you think Petraeus is at the CIA instead of at DOD? Yeah, exactly. I mean, enough said. Even, That's a good uh, term. I call him Betrayus. B E Treyas. <laughs> Betrayus. And, you know, El Chapo Guzman, uh, his uh, bodyguards are Taliban. So. Yeah. Okay. So, I want to switch gears just for a second. Stay there, Alexander. Sure. Chris, if they hit the Bashir reactor, and this is some of the largest reactors on Earth, when we come back, I want you to explain just how much radiation could be released. Or. Alternatively, if the fuel rod assembly bundles and just cooling pool four and these other ones go critical and blow, how much radiation could we have? We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, we uh, now have some confirmation of something going on in Japan. What is it, uh, Alexander? What's the uh, latest? You sent me another link here just a second ago. Yeah, um, we just got something out of the Deacon uh, or Deacon Herald. Uh, Japan confirms explosion leakage at nuke plant. This uh, out of Reuters, uh, Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary uh, Yukio Edano confirmed on Saturday there has been an explosion and radiation leakage at Tokyo Electric Power Company's TEPCO Fukushima Daiichi power plant. They're looking into the cause. Did they say where it was, though? Did they say it was one of the other reactors or it's a cooling pool? So no, a big difference. I'm, I'm quoting here what Adano said. He said, we're looking at the cause and the situation and we'll make that public when we have further information. At present, we think 10-kilometer evacuation is appropriate. Damn. Well, this, this we were hoping. Now, see, the thing is that, you know, we got to be very cautious. When we put our report now and says that this actually happened, we got to monitor our, our, our radiation detectors. I'm going to be putting up reports probably daily on uh, neutral medical and clay and iron. Uh, that means that uh, within probably 48 to 72 hours, those radiation now, clouds will hit here by Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, Japan earlier in the day 
warned of a meltdown at the reactor at the plant. And Where, uh, what day did this happen, by the way? Was this uh, earlier today, which is because of time zones? This was reported, yeah, by by Reuters. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't like Saturday or Sunday. It was like earlier today. No, on, uh, the explosion was on Saturday. Uh, right. And we found out just right now. Which means that if you're talking about 72 hours for the winds to bring it here, it should be hitting here tomorrow. No, by Wednesday. Yeah, I, I, find I would count you. I find it unacceptable of the time delay for reporting this. Um, that that is inherent uh, as an inherent cover up in itself. Oh, absolutely. We know that USAID is a CIA front, Chris, and USAID arrived 14 days after Fukushima happened. Uh, in order to keep, uh, uh, you know, a gag on the press and everything, control everything that goes out of the media. Right now, there are strict orders that nobody uh, can get information out unless, you know, USAID CIA gets a hang of it first and, you know, spins the story. This could very wow. well be a, uh, the, the type of event that we've been talking about for a long time. I think Where it's, uh, yeah, I mean... It's, no, I, I, no, here's the consequences. Uh, you talked about this in the break, Chris, and I want you to kind of re rewind. There's not a lot of old reactor material, so you won't have a lot of plutonium. If you hit Bushehr, you're going to hit a large amount of radiation very quickly, which will be many times more than Chernobyl, but it'll peter out relatively quickly because there's not a lot of deposit like 40 years. What's yeah. going to happen, though, in Fukushima, and not just Fukushima... On Chiba, Oe, or many other reactors around Japan where there's fault lines, there's literally five to six decades of material sitting around with high, a lot of it was highly enriched plutonium. Some of it brought even from the former Soviet Union back 20 years ago, sitting there because they were doing a reprocessing to make plutonium detonators for nuclear weapons on Fukushima. This is one of the great lies. What it means is that if this is a uh, explosion and fire, we're going to now get salted with massive catastrophic amounts of radiation and if you don't have your radiation kits from neutral medical if you don't have yourself ready with HEPA filters in your home if you don't start thinking about decon procedures I'm not going to say God help you because he sent his witnesses to try to help you but because you can't taste it see it or smell it and the sunshine looks the same etc over time though what's happening is the songbirds and the insects are either getting deformed or they're gone one of the things that people say in northern Japan because they're very attuned to the environment there and the beauty of everything in northern Japan is they say the songbirds are gone. They say the butterflies are malformed. The insects and the vegetables are strange. They're power washing fruit before they sell it. How crazy is that? Uh, Andrew, what, what you just read to me just made my stomach go into a knot. You know, th just thinking about what it could be and all. And I'm, my, my mind always runs to the very worst possible case. So, yeah, that's something that uh, I, I want more information, of course. And, uh, yeah, it, I, I couldn't even. I, I can only. I can only begin to imagine. Yeah, it, when you go to the D, D. Canner Herald, D E C C A N H E R A L D dot com, uh, and the link is there. It says Japan warns radiation leak. Yeah, Japan confirms explosion, comma leakage at nuke plant. And we know that they're covering it up. That no, it's not that bad. Just ten kilometers. Yeah, sure. Haven't they learned their lesson by now about covering up things? You know, it just, it just, uh, it, it amazes me on how corrupt uh, and how uh, closed minded that, uh, and, and really the lack of regard for the general population. You know, I, listen, you know, you know, Dr. Bill and, and Alexander, I've, I've gone in this, I said it a long time, there is no such thing as cold shutdown at that plant, at, at all those four, four plants. You cannot achieve cold shutdown because they're no longer. The viable power plants with off-site uh, systems and or on or actual the actual constructed systems and everything everything is a flimsy makeshift system. So um, and it's just it's designed to mask or mimic the uh, the functions of a cold shutdown reactor. Cold, those plants are dirty bombs. They're the ultimate dirty bomb, and there is no off switch. There is absolutely no off switch, and that's what really frightens me the most about. About that, There's, and you can't put it all back. The genie has left the bottle, and uh, we we have uh, we've talked about you know potentials for further uh, you know for further uh, kinds of uh, uh, problems and blunders at that plant. And uh, if, if you know, if I'm just I'm just thinking things like um, anything from one of the waste processing tanks with extra hydrogen in it exploded to uh, which is a mess in itself or something worse inside of the plant itself but that's just, just coming out of the top of my head right now 
I have no other f- further information to back it up. But it's not a good situation. There's no containment at that particular facility. There's no, there's no, there's no dikes, no dams, nothing that would, would prevent a runoff or, or an airborne release. And, uh, you, you know, that, that's, that's my opinion right now without knowing specific, more specific information. It really just disheartens me that yeah. they did not the, the, provide any more information until hours and days later. Yeah, this is uh, reported by Kiyoshi. Ta, uh, Takinata Naka, edited by Joseph Randall, uh, Ran, Ranford, and and it's reported in uh, Decana Hill uh, Herald, De, De, Decana Herald, D E C C A N yeah. Herald. What these newspapers do online, they pay Reuters for their stories. So it's like if you have a subscription to uh, Deutsche Press, they'll send you all the information worldwide from all their, their reporters. So they gave it to Reuters, which. Uh, uh, obviously, somebody vetted the information first, washed it down. It's just three paragraphs for a story this important. Is some somebody's, you know? Yeah, the, uh, it must be up. the link. Is, it must be jammed because I'm trying to get to open it up, and I'm sure everybody in the world is panicking and, and logging in there because I'm trying to go and open it up, and it's not opening. Well, I just saved so, it. I'm emailing it to you right now. If you've saved it, save it, and I'll do. If you got a screenshot, save it and send it, and I'll post it up because what people need to understand is they want to scrub this down real quick because. The fact that this leaked out, people are going to go into Panic City. And there's enough citizens that have nuclear detectors now that once people start seeing their detector go skyward, people are gone or free. You're going to start seeing people cleaning store shelves. You're going to start people panicking and realizing it's going to be dangerous to be outside uh, because the amount of radiation released, especially because people should realize these plumes can be highly cohesive. In other words, they can be just as radioactive but maybe 100 miles wide when it strikes North America. And that plume of radiation can stay at a certain altitude and then rain out on a certain area or go right across the country and not even rain out until it gets to, uh, to uh, you know, Czech Republic. Uh, and you, you can have it also on a clear day where radiation can come out as particles. So you can't assume it's just going to come out and rain. So uh, this is really bad. This is uh, really bad. And, and, and of course, they don't give us any information about what it is. Is it a reactor two uh, explosion? Is it the uh, fuel pool uh, pyre fork fire? What is it? it? Just is it just another? We're looking at the cost. They confirmed an explosion and radiation leakage. Now, my guess is this: that it's not the fuel pool. This is my guess. There's not the fuel pool yet. But what it is is one of these what I call burps of a transient criticality. In other words, the corium may be down 60 meters below the plant. And there's enough of it kind of agglomerated together, the hydrogen built up because it was down the water table. And you had, you had a hydrogen triggered critical reaction with an explosion and a massive burp of radiation. That's what my guess is. Because the 61st release was about two months ago. This is the 62nd major release. And by release, we mean either they did it on purpose by flushing in too much nitrogen into the reactors, or it happened because they didn't do enough and they had a hydrogen explosion. This, my guess, is just another one of these major what I call burps of radiation. But if it's a fuel pool, if we find out it's a fuel pool that's gone, we are really in a lot of trouble. It also means that for the last 20 months they've been feeding us BS, and uh, we've been a really, doing a really good job of picking it apart and all. And, well, I'm glad we got this report. As soon as the, I get that copy, uh, Alexander, I'll post it up. I just sent it, it in. Yeah. Yeah. I will. If you send it by email, I'll have it posted up because uh, it doesn't want to open here, and it means that. Uh, people must be listening here and on other programs or searching, and the uh, servers are jammed. They're DNS, they did, you know, denial of service because they're jammed. They can't carry the story and get it out. It's in your hotmail. I'll check it also, right, right we, now. It, and it also means that that really there is no adult supervision. That's something I said from day one. Okay. Uh, uh, that's a good term, no adult supervision. <laughs> 